you're a master of hype for all these cards. You, you truly believe this is a dynamite card, with the, especially with the top three fights? Yeah. Yeah, the top three fights are awesome. Uh, you know, B when's the last time BJ or Diego were in a boring fight? You know, th these guys are – and w with, with the new and improved BJ Penn, you know, I, I pulled him aside today and, you know, I said I don't want to sound goofy or condescending, but I'm proud of you, man. I mean, if you watch the Countdown show and you look at his training segment, he's a completely different uh, human being than he was a year ago. And uh, – I, I think this is going to be an amazing fight. Diego Sanchez yeah. is in your face nonstop uh, for, for, for three to five rounds. You know, I talked to uh, BJ a couple minutes ago, and I was like, I was trying to get to the the origins of how does Marv Marinovich, how is he the guy who flips the switch? I don't I don't get it. Like, by looks, you know, and then Marv's reputation was kind of like Marv Marinovich. And then all of a sudden, it's like this magical combination now for the last nine months. Right. You're, you're probably going to see. I, actually, I think that, you know, Marinovich has has – reinvigorated and boosted BJ Penn's career and I think BJ Penn has reinvigorated and boosted Marinovich's career okay. you know I, th I think these two it's one of those uh, things where these two met each other at the right time and place in their lives and uh, I think it's going to be good for both of them and I like his point when he was talking about the maturity and getting rid of the nonsense because I was I was telling him he didn't even remember but you know it's one of the probably 8,000 stunts he pulled he was at some king of the cage event back in like 2005 after you guys got pissed off at each other he dumped a belt and he was wearing some t-shirt like give the champ his money and he didn't remember and I'm like you know that that's probably really what derailed you for like three years it was a waste of your time right no he he, he wasted so much time and, and it used to bum me out so bad because I, I liked him and I knew how talented he was and, and, and what he was capable of doing and uh, you know I, I remember it like it was yesterday when him and his brother called me and said we're in Japan and he had the belt and, 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 and you know we're here talking to K1 mm -hmm. we want to fight for both and I'm like dude I'm telling you right fucking now you better not fucking sign that deal man I, I, it was like it was yesterday and then that was when he left and uh you know, he, he did. He, you, you said it good. You know, he wasted a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I, I, you know, in BJ's own way, he, I think he knows that. And he's not going to waste any more time. And he's out there and he's taking this serious. And I, I love it. Well, you know, it's actually an interesting card because Mir had the same deal. Now, a lot of that was mental struggles after the motorcycle accident. But, I mean, you repeatedly would be like, the guy's not working. I don't even know if he belongs uh, around now. When you look back on the criticism, do you think that helped him or was it a little over the top? Were you being a little mean to him uh, considering what he'd gone through? I'm going to be brutally fucking honest to everybody, period. That's just the way it is. It's, the, it's, it's a cold, hard fact, man. You know, um, when you're on top, I'll tell you you're on top. You're on. I'll give you your props, and, and when you're not, I'll, I'll tell you when you're not. Mm -hmm. And and if it motivates you, awesome. If it doesn't, then I guess you don't want it bad enough. You, I think you called me a doofus like about a month ago <laughs> on video, and it got me motivated. So now I'm really fine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> not the first time and not the last time I've been called a doofus by you or lots of other people. Um, when you watch Mir today, were you like, Frank, easy. I mean, I, I like the trash talk, but he's leaning back in the chair. He's smirking. He's laughing. Congo saying, uh, you know, he treat me like a piece of shit. Uh, I don't know, Frank. At some point, it's like, dude, back down a little bit. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, you know, it, listen, if you, it, <laughs> it's one thing to be cocky in the fight business and, and be confident. But when you're overly cocky, you know, mm -hmm. I, I and somebody asked that question today, do you think you've over motivated? Um, check Congo. I believe in that one million percent. Mm -hmm. You know, people believe in uh, some guys play head games with people and try to get into their head. I think he's in Congo's head the wrong way. All right. Before we look ahead, I want to get one side note from you. I know this is going to come off the wall. Um, we cover UNLV sports, right, on ESPN Radio 1100 in Vegas. The football program's a disaster. They're looking for an AD. Um, there's a lot of neg negativity in town. Like, you, you can't build it. It can't be a success. As a guy who, I know you're an international brand, but you started in Vegas. You got Vegas invigorated about the sport. As is just a sports fan and a guy who's a power player, why can't something like that that's almost like a pro sport college football work in town? Or do you believe it can? Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know a lot about, about football. You know, Lorenzo's a big football guy, but I would have to say since it's a, on a college level, a lot of it has to do with money, mm -hmm. you know. They, they, need, they need the backing of, of boosters or, you know, uh, you know, the casinos or the people from Las Vegas, and there's not a lot of fucking money out there right now. That's no. one of the big problems, you know. Um, but they could get a guy in there, but it's more than just coaching. I mean, you, you, could, you could bring in uh, – you know, any of the best football coaches in the world, if they don't have the money to play with and the right guys, you know, 
the money to recruit and to do the things that all these other big colleges can do, then I'd have to say it would be very tough. Yeah. Well, I see. I think part of it too, though, is you got you got to market. And as the guy who's the coach or the AD, you have to understand that Vegas is a little bit different. We're a little lazy. You know, we've got a lot of stuff going on. So if you're not going to go out and do the job in the community, it's not going to work. Yeah, it's true. Uh, and you know what? The, the, I would have to back in the days when Tark was there, mm -hmm. when you you know Tark was ingrained in the in, in the Las Vegas community. And if this guy wanted to go out and raise money, he could do it in two seconds. Right. You know, these other football teams out there, you know, the University of Miami and uh, Oklahoma. And All of them. I mean, Ohio State's got money galore. Yeah. And, I mean, these guys got tons and tons and tons of money. Mm -hmm. It's uh, and, and that's what it takes. It takes money. You know, listen, I, I worked my ass off getting this thing, but. I had some money behind me too. You know, you know what it's like. Yeah, you know what it's like though to convince you know big players to give money. Just tell Lorenzo to cut maybe uh, half the money that he gives to Bishop Gorman <laughs> and the recruiting budget they have. And you know uh, don't funny. tell him that though. I didn't say that. Bishop Gorman would beat you in LV <laughs> right now. <laughs> they uh, they, they got about ten Division One players. They're, they're, Nicer stadium too. It's crazy, man. It's true. It's crazy.